Она взорвалась слева. Осколки от стекол на машине посыпались, меняем в маму. Варя is just seven years old. A mine exploded just meters from the car she was in at a Russian checkpoint in Irpin. She spent three days in a local hospital before being transferred. The journey was a treacherous one. Soldiers had to carry her across a destroyed bridge. At Ohmadit, doctors operated for hours to get the shrapnel lodged in her body. She's had multiple surgeries on her legs as well. Her mother says Varia wants most to be home and for the war to end. Of course, the wounds you can't see might be the ones that will last the longest. Six-year-old Milana watched her mother die when a Russian missile hit their house near Hostomel. She bears the pain of injury and multiple surgeries on her legs, but the far greater pain is her irreplaceable loss. Her way of remembering hearts for her mom. She draws them every day. Mama. Yes, she paints Mama. Then there are the stories we will never hear. Someone placed the body of this little boy outside the hospital after he died. We don't know what happened to him. But in his image, we see what has happened to the youngest victims of this war. Now, the fact that the world is seeing images and stories like those is due in large part to the mission of Anastasia Magiragova. She is the press secretary for the Okmadit Children's Hospital, and I spoke to her earlier today. Yes, hello. Now I'm, I'm at the hospital right now. I live here for, <coughs> for one month already, and I film <coughs> everything you saw before. Yes. Uh, all Crimes, all these wounded children, uh, I filmed it with And we're going to talk about that in depth with you this morning. I introduced you, Anastasia, as the press secretary, but really that title doesn't begin to cover it because you're doing so much more now. How do you describe your work now and the job that you are doing in this war? Uh, yes, since the war started, I live here, I work here with my colleagues, with doctors, with nurses, all team of um, hospital and uh, every day I have no free days I just always on my phone with my phone I film and uh, take a picture of everything I see and I see every day I see wounded children wounded civilians and terrible things that's happening because of war and because of Russian army like and, and suffering Yes. I, I want to bring in a picture of one of the scenes that you captured, Olga. This is an image went around the world. The image is so brutal, it's almost unbearable to see them, as was the case with Olga, holding her six-week-old daughter. She was so severely wounded while shielding that baby from a missile strike. So this is typical of the images that you're capturing and sharing. Who do you hope sees them? Uh, yes, our press office made it, my colleague uh, Lydia, and uh, we just made it on our phone, uh, on our iPhones, uh, we do it, and our phone now like a weapon in this information war, because we want the world to know the truth, what's happening in Ukraine now because of war, and because of rocket attacks and the missile attacks that we, every day we see we hear air alarms, we hear sirens, uh, and it's terrible. And we don't know if tomorrow will happen to all of us. No. Incredible scenes. A a but to hear you talk about sort of the mission that you're on, to make sure that we hear the stories and it doesn't get lost in that misinformation war. You want us to know elsewhere in the world what is happening. Tell me a little bit what is happening right now. How many children are in the hospital now? Uh, we cannot tell uh, how many children we have, but we have a lot of children, not only wounded children, but also just normal our patient, because we are the biggest children in Ukraine, and uh, we have wounded people, wounded children, but also we have uh, normal patients, because uh, 
other diseases didn't disappear, unfortunately. And uh, there are a lot of people at the hospital right now. And but the doctors, and we're looking at these pictures, and we're going to show some pictures of you with those doctors who are working to save the lives of the children injured in, in the war and the other children who are critically ill. As you mentioned, you're living there with them. You are all there incredibly around the clock, 24-7, dealing with things in the war. Tell me about these doctors, because it's just incredible. The work that they're doing, the, work the conditions in which they're working. Can you share some details about that? Yes, of course. Uh, I am proud of our doctors, of our medical staff, because, because all of them are here. They live here. They do incredibly work without panic. They just do what they need to do. For me, they are heroes uh, because they save children, and not only children, people's lives every day. And for me, and I really inspired of them, and I am proud to be part of this team, and I try to help them in my way, what I can do on my position. And I try to help my hospital, my colleagues, uh, my doctors, my country, and uh, I film everything I see, their work, what they do every day, because I, uh, I want the world to see what in 21st century uh, happening in Ukraine, that rockets fly over the hospital, children's hospital, people, people die every day, and we see it every day. We see wounded children, wounded people, our doctors see terrible things every day. Bullets in children's body, shrapnels in uh, children's legs, heads, and ribs, and uh, we, our medical staff, and our team see it every day in our own eyes. Meanwhile, all of that happening, and they continue to provide care and operate on those children and try to bring them back to health. It is amazing. I, I'm wondering, one of the things that we've heard, Anastasia, is the fact that hospitals and health care facilities have actually been bombed, have actually been targeted in this war. And I'm wondering if that's an extra concern for you and the people at that hospital for your own safety. Yes, we worry about this because we had we found marks uh, on our hospital that uh, no, Russians put, put uh, on our hospital marks for rocket attacks. Uh, but we found it. We we understand that we could be a target. We understand it. And recently, we got rocket attack nearby, and one rocket got into the house that's not far away. We saw it. In, through the window and I filmed it, I made pictures, videos of that, and then we found pieces of rockets uh, around the hospital. I found huge piece of rockets uh, near my office, near my window, and we found it uh, on balcony of neonatal surgery department, and it's not okay. Mm. And uh, um, our windows from, in our hospital were crashed in some buildings. Yes. And we also filmed everything. And we're looking at that filming right there and the kinds of things that you have picked up uh, that you are showing in that picture. I'm wondering the kinds of things that you're seeing, the kinds of things that the children are seeing. Let's come back to the children for just a moment. They come to your hospital after experiencing trauma, the horrors of war, psychologically. How are they? What is their psychological condition? And what are you doing to help them in that respect? Uh, yes, children understand what, what is going on. And uh, they really in terrible psychological. Uh, and it's really difficult to take interview with these children. Uh, but we need to do it uh, and with their parents. Uh, they understand everything, and after this interview, I was crying, for example, and you know, because it's difficult to understand that this little girl saw how her mother was killed, uh, died, and she saw it in her own eyes. Or, you know, it, or it's difficult to talk with a boy, 14 years old, uh, whose father was mur murdered by a Russian soldier in front of him. Like his father was killed by a Russian soldier in in 
on his eyes. And it's difficult to understand that it's happening right now with just normal people that had normal life before. Uh, they had family, uh, but now they organize funerals and try to t take his father's body from Bucha because they cannot do it. For two days, his father's body lay down on the street. Anastasia, those, they're, they're just unbelievable stories of, of atrocities as you continue to tell us about them and to document them with your pictures. And I know you're helping those children psychologically, but I'm just listening to you and I'm wondering about you. As we've gotten to know you for these few minutes, you're just a young woman. You're hearing these horrible stories from the children to whom you are speaking. What effect is all of this having on you? Uh, uh, yeah, look, and uh, we have psychologists really good psychologists, they are working with children, of course. And it's, it's a really important part of treatment. Not only, we, we treat not only body because they have trauma, children have, have trauma. Uh, for me, I already, no, it's kind of, I, I didn't used to see dead children. I didn't used to see uh, children without fingers, with hole in their uh, cheeks, with hole in their bodies, with bullets uh, in their legs. I didn't used to see such things before, but now my phone full of uh, terrible things that we have. And about doctors, now I am uh, in surgery department where now is going one of the surgery and our doctor told me like they will never stop uh, they um they give medical care under sirens when we hear explosions they they told me like we will do what we we should do we will not stop even if here we'll be bombarding or uh, if something will happen, we will not stop. We will do our work till the end. Will you take care of yourself in the midst of all of this because you're doing invaluable work? We'll continue to follow your posts because you're documenting and chronicling the suffering, the very worst horrors of this war. Thank you very much, yes. Anastasia. Thank you for your attention. It's really important because we want the world to know the truth about this war and that's normal people the children are dying every day because of rockets because of uh, soldiers and so on Thank and you. here you is surgery now is good uh, it's the perfect image on which to conclude i'll let you go in there so you can document this and share I, it with the oh, world thank you thank you too